Okay, so um, this is going to be a quick tutorial that um, goes through some really introductory grasshopper commands. And essentially what we're aiming for is um, a setup kind of like what you're seeing here, uh, which is that in the Rhino window, which is back here on the left, is um, a surface with a kind of regular grid on it. And um, what you see on the right is an introduction to a kind of um, associative uh, model that exists in the Grasshopper space, which is a plugin for Rhino, and allows us to manipulate this in a kind of live and active way. Um, so much different than the way that we would model conventionally within Rhino. And what you're seeing here is a series of um, links between um, essentially parameters and um, and components. And what the parameters allow us to do is to vary the certain inputs um, so that we can adjust what we're seeing. So for example, this slider bar right here um, allows me to adjust the height of this plane. And this one allows me to adjust the width. And then these slider bars allow me to vary the amount of subdivisions of that plane and um, in both the vertical and horizontal dimension. Uh, so this is essentially what we're going to build um, for this first exercise, and it'll be a kind of prelude to a little bit more sophisticated modeling that we'll get into in the next week. So the way to do this is um, start with a new Rhino file, uh, and let's do it in inches. And um, we've got the typical Rhino space, and um, we'll open up Grasshopper by typing in grasshopper into the command prompt. And that's going to open up the, the grasshopper plugin. And so right now what we've got, I'll just go and I'll close um, the file that we were just looking at. And so we'll just have these two, so the, the rhino window and the grasshopper window. And um, just by way of introduction, um, Grasshopper, and this will all become kind of evident through a little bit more work, but there's essentially a canvas um, where we lay out uh, components and parameters and put them into relationships with each other. And all of those come from a series of um, menu options here um, along the top. And there's a kind of correspondence between a lot of these elements and the kinds of commands that you would find in Rhino. The main difference is that these are associative and have a kind of history built into them that allows you to make manipulations um, after the object has already been been formed or produced. So um, what we want to start with is um, we want to build a plane and the way that we can do that is by going to the surface menu and um, going under uh, the primitive area here, um, the kind of primitive subset, and you know it has icons that represent um, different commands. Probably the easiest thing to do is to left click on the bar at the bottom, and that will just bring down both the icons and the names. And here we can go to a um, a plain surface, and what we do is we click on that, and then it's asking us to drop it onto the canvas. So you left click. And now it's in the, the grasshopper canvas. And you can zoom in and out on this space. Um, and what this is, so this is a component, and components typically have um, a kind of input side along the left and then an output side along the right. So what it's looking for are a series of inputs. Um, and if you just kind of hover over, uh, it'll bring those up. So the first one is looking for a surface base plane. Um, and then it's looking for a dimension in the x-direction and a dimension in the y-direction. And then the output is going to be the resulting plane. So those are all the things that go into making this. Um, typically when something is dropped into the canvas, it's orange because it doesn't have data. And then it will turn green when you select it. Um, and then it'll turn gray when it has data that's fed into it. Uh, or it'll turn red if that data is incompatible with that particular component. So, um, first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to establish a surface base plane. And I'm just going to set up this space here so that because these things kind of sit on top of each other, what I'm going to do is um, 
I'm going to bring this over so it kind of sits beside the Rhino window. Um, and if I right click on the on the letter P and um, bring up this menu, it can um, allow me to set a plane. So if I click on that, suddenly it goes into the Rhino space. And um, what I can do is at first establish the plane origin, which we'll, we'll just call it 0, 0, 0 for right now. So I'll just type in 0, hit enter. It's going to drop it right at um, the typical 0, 0, 0 point. And what I'll do is hold down shift and pull to the right. And then I'm going to pull straight up. And so what that's going to do is give me a vertical plane, um, which is more suitable for the kind of facade studies that we're going to be doing. So this plane has been established um, in terms of its orientation, and now it needs some dimension, either in the x direction or the y direction, or actually it needs both. So you can do this two ways. You can either do it with um, what's called persistent data, uh, which is something that's kind of fixed and like so let's say input by hand or kind of linked to something that's in the model. Or you can do it with volatile data, which is a kind of parametric approach with um, sort of inputs that are controllable within the, the grasshopper space. If we were doing it persistently, what I could do is I can right click on the X and I can set one interval. And again, it jumps back into Rhino and it says, you know, it's asking for a domain. So it's asking for a sort of range. So if I give it 0 as my start, and then let's say 100 is the end, then that's established the x dimension. And then for the y, I would do the same thing. Let's say 0, and we'll call it 200. So now what it's done is it's set up um, a vertical, vertically oriented plane, uh, which is 200 units or inches tall and 100 uh, inches wide. Um, but that, if I wanted to make any changes to that, I would have to go in here and I would have to adjust that. And it becomes a much more sort of like cumbersome process, but we want something a little bit more active. So what we're going to do is rather than doing it numerically, we're going to use um, what's called volatile data by introducing a parameter. And in this case, we'll go to the number slider, which is over here in the special area. These number sliders, you'll find that you use these a lot. Um, and what it does is it allows you to um, essentially input a number that can be sort of slid back and forth. And once it gets linked into this, you'll start to see um, the way that that alters the overall size and appearance of the, the object that's been constructed. Um, I'm going to pause right here and then we'll go to the, we'll do it as a kind of multi-part um, uh, multi-part set of videos. So I'm going to pause here and then um, pick up on number two in one second.